you have found three true stories of mystery, chemtrails, green children of Woolpit, and the Pascagoula abduction. Chemtrails. The enigma of chemtrails has captivated public attention and debate for decades, weaving a complex web of myth, science, and speculation, originating from the innocuous contrails, the water vapor left by aircraft at high altitudes. This theory transforms these linear cloud formations into a canvas for much grander narratives. While scientists categorize these as mere byproducts of air travel, a substantial faction views them through a lens tinted with suspicion and wonder. This exploration delves deeper into the less explored corridors of the chemtrail theory, including its mystical implications, sprawling conspiracy theories, and even suggestions of extraterrestrial involvement. By unraveling these threads, we aim to understand the beliefs and psychological and cultural factors that give rise to such elaborate interpretations. Beyond mere chemical concerns, chemtrails are sometimes viewed through a mystical lens, with theories interweaving them with spiritual and esoteric concepts. Adherents to this belief see these trails as more than physical phenomena. They are perceived as tools in a metaphysical play, influencing or indicating shifts in cosmic energies. Some narratives draw parallels with ancient sky and weather manipulation practices, suggesting that modern chemtrails continue such forgotten arts. This intersection with New Age philosophies often assigns either a benevolent role to chemtrails, seen as part of Earth's spiritual cleansing, or a malevolent one, where they symbolize a metaphysical assault on human consciousness. In a quaint, verdant town nestled in the heart of Oregon's wilderness, a unique assembly of individuals comes together under the banner of spiritual resistance. Once a month, under the vast expanse of the sky, they gather to observe and interpret the crisscrossing trails left by aircraft. This group, comprised of people from diverse walks of life, shares a common belief that these chemtrails are not mere vapor trails, but potent symbols in a cosmic tug of war between forces of light and darkness. They engage in elaborate rituals during their gatherings, which often coincide with lunar phases. These rituals, a blend of ancient and modern spiritual practices, are believed to counteract the negative energies they associate with chemtrails. For them, each trail in the sky is not just a physical occurrence, but a spiritual sign, a call to arms in a battle that transcends the earthly plane. The conspiracy theories surrounding chemtrails are a jigsaw puzzle of suspicion and fear. The notion that governments or secretive organizations employ these trails for purposes like weather modification, environmental manipulation, or even as part of a broader agenda to combat climate change in secret forms the crux of numerous theories. Others extend this to the realm of public health and societal control, suggesting that chemtrails are a medium for mass medication or population management through the dissemination of harmful substances. The health-related theories are particularly poignant, with proponents correlating the increase in various ailments with the prevalence of chemtrails. Despite the lack of scientific backing, these theories resonate with those distrustful of governmental and scientific establishments, weaving a narrative of betrayal and clandestine harm. In a small cluttered study room in Michigan, a retired engineer dedicates his time to unraveling what he believes is one of the greatest cover-ups of our time. His blog, a trove of articles, images, and videos, is a testament to his tireless quest to expose the truth behind chemtrails. He is convinced that these trails are part of a clandestine government program aimed at geoengineering, controlling weather patterns, and manipulating the environment under the guise of combating climate change. With meticulous detail, he documents instances where he believes weather anomalies have followed periods of intense chemtrail activity. His blog has become a magnet for like-minded individuals, sparking debate and drawing a significant following from all corners of the globe. The alien theory, Regarding chemtrails adds an interstellar dimension to the debate. Here, the trails are not mere byproducts of human activity, but are linked to extraterrestrial visitors. According to this belief, these patterns in the sky are either accidental releases from alien spacecraft or deliberate attempts at modifying Earth's atmosphere for unknown alien purposes. These theories often converge with larger UFO conspiracy narratives, suggesting a hidden synergy between earthly governments and extraterrestrial beings with chemtrails being a part of this covert collaboration. Under the clear, starlit skies of Nevada, near the fringes of known alien hotspots, lives a woman whose life's mission is to uncover the connection between UFO sightings and chemtrails. Her compelling accounts, filled with personal observations and detailed notes, suggest a pattern she finds unmistakable. According to her, the appearance of chemtrails is often followed by unexplained aerial phenomena. 
lights, and objects that defy conventional explanation. In her narrative, these trails are not the product of any human activity, but are intricately linked to extraterrestrial beings. She theorizes that these patterns in the sky could be accidental byproducts of alien propulsion systems or part of a grander scheme to alter Earth's atmosphere, potentially as a prelude to extraterrestrial colonization or acclimatization. An important aspect of understanding the chemtrail phenomenon is examining the psychological and sociological underpinnings of these beliefs. Why do people believe in chemtrails despite scientific dismissal? This exploration reveals a complex interplay of distrust in authorities, the human tendency to find patterns in randomness, apophenia, and the allure of being privy to forbidden knowledge. This aspect of chemtrail theories highlights how they fulfill certain psychological needs, offering simple explanations for complex phenomena and providing a sense of community among believers. In the bustling heart of New York City, a psychologist delves into the minds of those who steadfastly believe in the chemtrail conspiracy. Through a series of interviews and questionnaires, he uncovers a fascinating tapestry of distrust, pattern recognition, and a deep-seated need for understanding in an increasingly complex world. His study reveals that many of his subjects, staunch believers in the chemtrail theory, exhibit strong skepticism towards official narratives and a marked tendency to find meaningful patterns in random data. This research shines a light on the psychological underpinnings of conspiracy beliefs, highlighting how such theories can offer a sense of control and comprehension in a world perceived as chaotic and opaque. The narrative of chemtrails extends beyond the realm of conspiracy and mysticism, intertwining significantly with environmental and political discourses. This theory, in its essence, serves as a reflection and magnification of prevalent public concerns regarding environmental degradation, the pressing issue of climate change, and the ongoing debate over governmental transparency. Chemtrails, in this broader context, emerge not just as isolated phenomena, but as symbols of the deeper, more pervasive anxieties about the impact of human activities on the planet and the perceived reliability and motives of those in positions of authority. On the sun-kissed shores of California, a group of environmental activists has woven the narrative of chemtrails into their broader environmental mission. They use the theory as a powerful symbol to highlight the hidden dangers of human intervention in nature and the perceived opacity of government actions. While they acknowledge the lack of scientific evidence for the harmful effects of chemtrails, they argue that the theory exemplifies larger issues such as climate change, environmental degradation, and the need for transparency in governmental environmental policies. Their campaigns, infused with fervor and a sense of urgency, strive to awaken the public to the broader implications of human impact on the planet, with chemtrails serving as a poignant, if controversial, emblem of these concerns. In sum, the narrative of chemtrails is far more than a fringe conspiracy theory. It is a rich tapestry that intertwines the mystical, the paranoid, the scientific, and the extraterrestrial into a compelling story about human belief and perception. It mirrors our fears, hopes, and the eternal quest for understanding in an increasingly complex world. Whether one views chemtrails as harmful environmental phenomena, spiritual signs, governmental conspiracies, or alien activities, they undeniably represent a fascinating intersection of science, folklore, and the human psyche. As we gaze upwards at the trails crisscrossing the sky, they remind us of our endless pursuit of meaning in the mysteries surrounding us. Green Children of Woolpit In the verdant fields of Suffolk, England, the quaint village of Woolpit serves as the backdrop to one of history's most intriguing mysteries. This tale, woven into the fabric of medieval folklore, has endured for centuries, a perplexing riddle wrapped in the enigma of the green children of Woolpit, discovered under circumstances as mysterious as their appearance. These children, with their skin of an unearthly green hue, emerged from the shadows of history into the full glare of enduring legend. The story unfolds in the 12th century, a time of political turmoil and social upheaval in England. Woolpit, then a typical English village, was known for its wolf traps, pits designed to protect villagers from the predators that roam the nearby woods. It was here, in this unlikely setting, that the green children appeared as if stepping out from the pages of a fairy tale into the stark reality of the medieval world. Their arrival sparked a series of questions that have echoed down the ages. Who were these children? Where did they come from? What caused their strange pigmentation? The chronicles of the time, including those by notable historians William of Newburgh and Ralph of Coggeshall, 
provide our primary accounts of this enigma. According to these sources, the children, a boy and a girl, were found by villagers beside a wolf pit. Their clothes were of an unknown material, and their language was incomprehensible to the bewildered locals. But it was their skin, an inexplicable shade of green, that set them apart, marking them as perhaps the most extraordinary inhabitants wool pit had ever seen. The children were taken in by Sir Richard de Calm, a local landowner. In an environment alien to them, they initially refused all food, a refusal that seemed to threaten their very survival. It wasn't until they came across green beans that they showed any willingness to eat. As time passed and with a regular diet, the green tint of their skin gradually faded. Tragically, the boy, weaker and perhaps more profoundly affected by their journey, succumbed to illness and died. The girl, however, thrived in her new surroundings. As she learned to speak English, she began to shed light on their mysterious past. She spoke of a homeland named St. Martin's Land, an ethereal place characterized by perpetual twilight. She recounted how she and her brother had been tending to their father's herd when they followed the sound of bells, enticing and mesmerizing, eventually leading them to Woolpit. Theories about the children's origins have ranged from the fantastical to the scholarly. Some suggest a folkloric interpretation, where the children are seen as symbols of nature or otherworldly beings. This aligns with the rich tapestry of English folklore, where the boundary between the real and the supernatural is often blurred. Others propose a more historical explanation. The children may have been Flemish orphans, possibly from a nearby settlement. Their green hue could be attributed to chlorosis, a condition caused by dietary deficiencies. The unfamiliar language and clothing would support this theory, pointing to their foreign origin and subsequent isolation. The story of the green children must be viewed against the backdrop of the period's cultural and societal norms. The 12th century was a time of superstition and belief in the supernatural. It was also a period of significant Flemish immigration to England, often met with hostility and suspicion. These factors might have shaped the narrative, influencing both contemporary and later interpretations of the event. Over the centuries, the legend of the green children of Woolpit has inspired artists, writers, and scholars. It has been adapted into various literary forms, capturing the imagination of audiences with its blend of mystery and historical intrigue. The story, in its various retellings, has evolved, yet it consistently reflects the human fascination with the unknown and the unexplainable. Today, the tale of the green children of Woolpit remains a captivating blend of history and mystery. It invites us to explore the boundaries of our understanding and to question the limits of our knowledge. The story endures not only as a fascinating historical anecdote, but also as a symbolic narrative that challenges our perceptions of the past and the unknown. The village of Woolpit, with its medieval charm, continues to bear witness to this enduring mystery. The legend of the green children is more than a mere historical curiosity. It is a powerful reminder of the enduring human quest for understanding and meaning in a world replete with mysteries. As we look back on this tale, it encourages us to ponder the narratives we create to make sense of the inexplicable. The green children of Woolpit, in their silence, speak volumes about our need to find stories in the unknown, a need as relevant today as it was in the 12th century. In the heart of Suffolk, their legacy lives on, a testament to the timeless allure of mystery and the endless quest for answers in our collective history. The Pascagoula abduction, in the shadowy realms of human experience, where reality intertwines with the inexplicable, lies the tale of the Pascagoula abduction. This narrative, etched into the annals of UFO lore, unfolds in the small, sleepy town of Pascagoula, Mississippi. Like a page from a Stephen King novel, it weaves a tapestry of the mundane and the fantastical, challenging the boundaries of belief and skepticism. On the evening of October 11, 1973, two shipyard workers, Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker, embarked on a routine fishing trip after a long day's work. Little did they know, their lives were about to be irrevocably altered in ways that would haunt them for decades. The Pascagoula abduction is not merely a tale of an encounter with the unknown, it is a journey into the depths of the human psyche, a confrontation with the unfathomable mysteries that lurk just beyond our understanding. As we delve into their story, we tread a path that blurs the lines between reality and imagination, a reminder that the world is filled with more wonders and horrors than are dreamt of in our philosophies. Let us embark on this journey, keeping in mind that the truth, often, is stranger than fiction. The tranquil waters of the Pascagoula River provided a serene backdrop as Hickson and Parker settled in for an evening of fishing. The humdrum of the shipyard was behind them, replaced by the gentle lapping of water against the shore. 
The peacefulness of the scene, however, was about to be shattered. As dusk settled, an otherworldly event unfolded. A strange blue-lighted craft, defying the laws of physics, descended upon them. This was no conventional aircraft. Its eerie appearance and unnatural movement suggested something far beyond human technology. The two men, gripped by an understandable terror, found themselves facing an encounter that would challenge the very fabric of their reality. What followed was a harrowing experience that would become a cornerstone of UFO abduction lore. The men described being paralyzed and levitated into the spacecraft by unseen forces. Inside, they encountered beings, not of this world. Creatures described as robotic in nature, with wrinkled skin and crab-like pincers. These beings, seemingly emotionless and methodical, subjected Hickson and Parker to an examination, an experience that transcended the realm of the known. The examination, as recounted by the two men, was both invasive and bewildering. They spoke of telepathic communication, a method beyond human understanding, through which these beings conveyed a sense of reassurance. Despite this, the terror and confusion Hickson and Parker felt were palpable. The examination was brief, yet it left an indelible mark on their psyche. As suddenly as it had begun, the encounter ended. The men found themselves back on the riverbank, the mysterious craft disappearing into the night sky as quickly as it had appeared. The world around them had remained unchanged, but they had been transformed, their reality irrevocably altered. In the aftermath of their experience, Hickson and Parker faced the inevitable skepticism and disbelief that accompany such extraordinary claims. Yet their story remained consistent. They underwent polygraph tests, psychological evaluations, and intense scrutiny from both believers and skeptics alike. The sincerity and conviction in their accounts lent a certain credibility to their tale, one that continues to perplex and intrigue. The Pascagoula incident transcends the typical narrative of close encounters. Unlike other stories shrouded in ambiguity, this event was immediately reported to the authorities. The two men, still reeling from shock, sought the help of the local sheriff's department. Their earnestness and visible distress added a layer of authenticity to their extraordinary claim. The subsequent investigation brought the incident to the forefront of public attention. The sheriff's office, initially skeptical, found itself grappling with the sincerity and detailed descriptions provided by Hickson and Parker. Furthermore, a secret recording of the two men discussing their experience revealed their genuine fear and bewilderment, lending further credibility to their account. The story of the Pascagoula abduction spread rapidly, capturing the imagination of the nation. It sparked debates and discussions on the possibility of extraterrestrial life and the nature of the universe. The incident became a touchstone for UFO enthusiasts, drawing researchers and curious onlookers to the small town of Pascagoula. Over the years, the incident has been scrutinized and analyzed from various perspectives. Skeptics have proposed alternative explanations, ranging from hallucinations to elaborate hoaxes. However, the lack of any clear motive for deception, coupled with the men's steadfast adherence to their story, challenges these skeptical views. In the years following the incident, Hickson became an outspoken figure in the UFO community, sharing his experience at conferences and in interviews. Parker, on the other hand, remained largely silent only recently coming forward with his own account of the event. Their differing approaches to their shared experience highlight the profound and personal impact of their encounter. As time has passed, the Pascagoula abduction remains a compelling narrative, not only for its bizarre details, but also for its profound impact on the individuals involved. Hickson and Parker's lives were forever altered by that autumn night on the Pascagoula River. Their story, a chilling blend of the ordinary and the extraordinary, continues to evoke wonder, skepticism, and endless speculation. Hickson and Parker's lives were forever altered by that autumn night on the Pascagoula River. Their story, a chilling blend of the ordinary and the extraordinary, continues to evoke wonder, skepticism, and endless speculation. In a world eager for answers, the Pascagoula abduction stands as a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lie just beyond our grasp. It challenges us to look beyond our conventional understanding of reality to entertain the possibility of a universe far more complex and enigmatic than we ever imagined. As we conclude the tale of the Pascagoula abduction, we are left to ponder the enigma of Hickson and Parker's experience. Their story, like a chilling narrative from a Stephen King novel, pushes us to confront the unknown, to question our understanding of the universe and our place within it. The Pascagoula incident remains one of the most well-documented and intriguing cases in UFO history. It challenges not just our skepticism, 
but also our willingness to entertain the possibility of life beyond our planet, of experiences that transcend our conventional understanding. Hickson and Parker's encounter stands as a testament to the unexplained mysteries that dot the landscape of human experience. Whether one views the Pascagoula abduction as a factual account of an extraterrestrial encounter or as a psychological phenomenon, its impact is undeniable. It invites us to look beyond the veil of the ordinary to consider the vast, uncharted territories of existence. In a world where the lines between the known and the unknown are perpetually blurred, stories like this remind us that the universe is filled with wonders and terrors beyond our wildest imaginations. The Pascagoula abduction, in the end, is not just a story of alien encounter. It is a narrative about the human quest for understanding in the face of the incomprehensible, a journey into the heart of the unknown. We appreciate your company as we navigate these enigmatic tales. If you found this journey enjoyable, show your most horrific support by slashing the like button, subscribing, and smashing the bell. We have exclusive products based on these stories in the comments. Stay tuned to the channel for more dark and disturbing tales based on true stories or unique stories inspired by those events. If there is a story you would like to hear, please leave a comment.